Hey y'all, Kentucky Farmer here, and welcome back to the second episode in my FS17 course play series. Uh, in the last episode in this series, I covered the basics of how to install the beta edition of course play. Course play is still in beta while I'm recording these videos. Uh, hopefully not much will change. If it does change significantly, uh, I will probably re-record some of these videos, kind of depending on how that happens. Uh, initially, the next couple of videos are going to be relatively short, and they're going to be pretty simple. I'm just going to focus on the basics. Once I get the basics out of the way, then I will start to cover some of the more and more advanced topics. And uh, like a lot of stuff in this game, the really advanced stuff builds on the really basic stuff. So I want to make sure I get the foundation right here. So the first thing about course play is this is the course play window here. Uh, on my computer, what I do to bring it up is right-click with the mouse. I'm pretty sure that's one of the default settings for it. So in the settings, there is an option here, open HUD with, and so mine is set to mouse right, but you can do you know left control delete if mouse right conflicts with something. So coming back here, this is the course play control tab. Uh, this is sort of the main tab, if you will. And the first thing I want to talk about are these various course types that are down here at the bottom. Or m course modes, depending on the terminology. Uh, and this is kind of in no particular order, because honestly, uh, transport mode is probably one, or fieldwork mode are probably some of the ones that you use the most, but we'll just go through them left to right here. This first one here is grain transport, load at start. So this is the mode that you would use if you want to set up a course to sell grain from your silo at a sales point, right? So if you wanted to set up a course to take wheat to Denton Bakery, it would be a grain transport load at start. And basically what that means is the course begins at the fill point. Your tractor will fill with whatever the grain is once it's full. It will drive the course until it gets to the unload point. It auto detects the unload, unload point. It'll stop, unload, and then continue on the course until it gets back to the refill point. And it will automatically refill itself and then continue on the course. And it'll keep doing that over and over again until there's no longer enough grain at the silo to fill the trailer up 100%. Then it will stop and wait for you at that point. The second course here is the combine course, and this is used uh, to empty a combine that's working in a field. So you can send a combine out to a field. You can either have the combine controlled by course play or just be a hired worker or something like that. And you use this course to set up the tractor that's pulling a trailer or a tipper, and it will detect the status of the combine or combines, like you can do multiple in the field, and when they need to be unloaded, the tractor will automatically drive to the combine, unload it, come back, drive the course, and the course will typically then take it back to your farm or to some other grain drop-off point. Drop off the grain, once it's empty it drives back to the field where it will wait for the next combine that needs to be unloaded. So the next one that we have here is the overloader mode. This is similar, but with this you would normally have, say, a semi with a, with a big grain trailer that parks at the field edge, and it would be running a combine course. And then you would have a tractor with an auger wagon running this auger course. And it's set to drive from the waiting semi out to the field and unload the combines as needed and then drive back to the semi and unload into the semi and then just repeat that course. This is a pretty nice setup with course play because uh, if you have a long route that it takes a while for the semi to go unload and come back, you can have your auger wagon unloading combines well, it's driving, well, the semi is driving to unload, right? Whereas if you did it in a combine mode, if your vehicle's busy driving all the way back to your farm, then it can't obviously also be out in the field emptying the combines. 
So the next mode that we have here is the fertilize and seeding mode. This mode is almost better if you think of this as uh, anything you need to do in a field where you're going to be expending resources. So you'll be using seed, using fertilizer, anything you do in a field where you're actually using or consuming a resource, you would use the fertilize and seeding course. And these courses can be set up with an optional refill course. And uh, the, the refill course will allow, say for example, you have a really big field and your seeder can't do the entire field without running out. It will keep going back and forth and doing work in the field. And once it's out of seed, it will drive the refill course, go refill, come back and pick up where it left off and then continue doing work. And it, that will work for, you know, seed, fertilizer, or anything that's consumed in the field. The next course that we have here is the transfer course. And this is probably one of the most commonly used courses. It's also one of the most simplistic courses in course play. It's basically a way that you can record a course for driving from one place to another and then play that course back. So, uh, you know, a lot of times, especially on this map, uh, I'll record a course from here at the shop all the way back to my farm and then save that course. That way, whenever I buy a new piece of equipment at the shop, I can just jump in it, load the course, hit play, and jump back into a different piece of equipment. And that one will drive back to my farm for me. Now, if you have a really big map and you have to drive a lot from one place to another, your farm to the BGA, your farm to the cow area, something like that, you can set up a lot of one-way courses for that. And you can get a little more complicated with it where you can actually set up multiple one-way courses and then load them together to chain them into one long course. And that's something that we'll cover here in a couple of videos. The next one is the field work mode. Um, this is kind of probably tied with the transfer course as far as being like the most used one. This is, uh, this is the mode that you would use for plowing, cultivating. Um, you would, you would use this for all of your hay work. So mowing, tedding, raking, baling, bale wrapping, and you can use it for collecting windrow with a loading wagon. You can use it for running combines. Uh, so there's quite a few things that you can do in field work mode. Uh, you can run your weeder with it. And so, yeah, it's, it's a really useful, useful mode. You can do a lot of stuff. The next one over here is the combine self unloading mode and you can't actually do that in a tractor. You have to be in a combine. And so you can see here, we'll wait for the, there we go. So this is the combine self unloading mode. And basically what this mode allows you to do is it's sort of like a combination of the overloader mode and combining. So you can have a hired worker, not course play, but just a normal hired worker out working and combining the field. And when the combine's full, course play will actually take over and drive that combine to a spot that you specify in the course, unload, and then return back where it was, and then the hired worker will resume work in the field. And so typically in this mode, you would have it offloading into a field side semi that would be running in a combine mode. All right, so the next mode is the liquid product transport mode. This mode would be used to transport digestate or liquid manure from the storage point at your BGA or your pig farm or cow farm field side where it would wait and then a fertilizer that's working in the field could then come and refill from it using a fertilize and seeding course. The next mode is fill an empty shovel. Uh, this mode is used to operate a front loader or a wheel loader 
and you can scoop up product off the ground and lift it, move it, and dump it into something. So commonly this is used at the BGA to scoop up silage and load it into the uh, silo kings at the BGA for processing so that you can sell it. But you can also use this, say you have a pile of wood chips on the ground, you can use this to pick up the wood chips and put them in a trailer or pick up the wood chips and sell them at the sawmill. Uh, if you have manure, you can use this to pick up the manure and load it into a manure spreader. Uh, so anything where you need to use a bucket to scoop something up off the ground and then dump it. It's a great handy course once you know how to use it. It can be a real time saver. And finally, the last course here is the leveling and compacting course. This is a new one now for FS17. They added this course uh, because the, the silos at the BGA are a little more complicated in FS17 than they were in FS15. And so this course will actually run the tractor with the leveling blade that will run back and forth over the silo and make sure it's level and compacted and it actually works in conjunction with uh, another tractor running in combine mode. And it can sense if the other tractor in combine mode is coming to unload. And you will unload at the end of the silo and then the tractor running, uh, the, the tractor running in leveling compacting mode will then take the pile that's dumped at the end of the silo and push it into the silo, level it out, and compact it automatically. So that's the basics of all the various modes that CoursePlay can run in. Uh, the next tab over here is the Manage Courses tab. And this is where you can save and load your courses. And then we've got uh, a few tabs that we can't actually go into right now because they're dependent on either what the vehicle is doing or what sort of course you have currently loaded or what mode you're in. Uh, if you'll notice, like, see this tab, we can't click it, but if we put it in field work mode, now we can. So there's certain modes that will activate. So, you know, if we do uh, fill an empty shovel, well now the settings for fill an empty shovel come on. If we do level and compacting, then those settings come on, right? So uh, you won't necessarily need to use all of these tabs, uh, but it's depending on you know what it is you're actually trying to do. So then irregardless of what mode you're in, these three tabs will also be available. This one is the speed limits tab, and this is kind of the default settings here. Uh, it will run off of the course recording. So in your recording, if you are driving at 10 miles an hour, then in theory, when you play back the course, if you have it set like this, the tractor should also be going about 10 miles an hour. So it's whatever speed it is you recorded it at. You can override this then, and you can specify the maximum speeds for all these different activities turning field speed, street speed, and reversing speed. Then on this tab, this is our settings tab. We already looked at this a little bit earlier. Uh, one of the settings you can do is how you want to open the HUD with the mouse. Uh, show waypoints. So when you make a course, there'll be little dots or icons that show up on the screen that show you the start and end of the course. And if you select this, it'll show all the waypoints in the course, even the ones in the middle. And if you show this, it will show or hide the crossing points, which is uh, when you merge multiple courses together, the crossing points are the points at which the transition from one course to another. And then you got a setting here for warning lights, whether you want to do beacon lights. Uh, what else can we do here? Beacon and hazards, beacon always or never turn on beacons. So, Map icons, display text, name and course, or deactivated, name only, name and course. 
Refill fuel at gas station always below 20. So this is a, I think they added this setting recently. Uh, course Play's always kind of supported this feature and what you could do is on your course, say I was driving from here to the farm. It's probably a bad example because if you're driving from the dealer, you probably have a full tank of gas, but say you're driving from one place to another and your course happens to go past a gas station. You can actually pull in and drive past the fuel pump and then continue on your course. And if the vehicle runs low on gas, it will automatically stop while playing that course, refill itself, and then keep going. And so that's with the always, but then you can say below 20, meaning it will only stop and refuel itself at the gas station if it's below 20%. Debug channels, we don't really have to worry about this. This is a pretty advanced setting. Pretty much, um, if you go to submit a bug report on the CoursePlay website, they may respond back, please, you know, post a screenshot with debug channels 11 and 14 activated or something like that, depending on what it is they want to look at. And then on the next tab here, we've got driving settings and this will have more or less stuff on it depending on what you're doing. So right now, because we don't have a course loaded, the only option we have is to copy a course and there aren't any other courses loaded on any other tractors in the save, so I can't actually copy that course right now. So there you have it. That is the basics of the course play interface. Uh, we'll go into some more advanced stuff in the next couple of videos. And so hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, would you please give it a thumbs up? That helps a lot. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more Farming Simulator videos. I'm Kentucky Farmer. Thanks for watching.